All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video, I wanna give you guys some planting tips so that if you're planting your fig tree in the ground, you can have incredible success. And I've just planted over the years hundreds of fig trees in the ground here in the Philadelphia area. I actually have here on this property now, I think close to 150 fig trees planted in the ground. And I've definitely struggled with a number of them after planting. And in order to kind of make this a very seamless transition and to have a really nice, beautiful tree by the summertime after planting in the spring, I'm evaluating my trees now in this new plot that I've created. And these are just some really solid tips for you guys. So if you're planting in the fall, the spring uh, or that fall weather, that turn of cooler weather is right around the corner. The winter time is also a really nice time to plant for people in longer season and more mild winter climates. But maybe you wanna use these tips in the springtime. Um, first and foremost, tip number one, and this is I think critical, is to plant your fig tree. If planting it from a container and transplanting that into the ground, grow it out in a larger container first. I find that actually the two or three gallon size is really the sweet spot, which is like an eight by eight inch container to a 10 by 10 inch container. Um, I find the one gallon size, and this is what I typically ship to you guys across the country. They're easier to mail, they're lighter, um, they're smaller trees, so the shipping rates are, are just lower. And so I would recommend actually waiting. I, would, I now really believe if you take that one gallon pot, put it into something larger and grow it out for a little bit, and then plant it in the ground, you're gonna see a lot more success. Especially, this is the key sign, if your potted fig tree is continuing to grow, if you look at some of the growth points here, they are continuing to put out new leaves. And that should be the case. Your, your tree, before you plant it, should not only be really established in its container, you should avoid transplant shock at all costs. Don't damage the roots whatsoever. But I would also argue, unless it's extremely root bound, by the way, but I would also argue that your container fig tree should just continue to be growing. It should be in this active growth stage. If it's not growing, there's probably a sign it's not healthy in the container. What makes you think by putting it in a new home, it's going to suddenly turn around? It might, I guess, but you know, I would recommend getting your tree really happy and healthy first before putting it in the ground. And that larger root system of a two or three gallon size definitely goes a long way towards getting them established and healthy, productive uh, in a shorter period of time. Another really nice tip, and I'll just say this probably to the day I die, and I tell you guys all the time with all the perennials I grow, you know, I don't just grow fig trees here, guys. I got this whole little food forest system set up here where there's persimmons and pawpaw and gumi, gooseberries, comfrey, apple trees, quince, cornelian cherries, muscadines, uh, you know, labrusca vinifera grapes. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. It doesn't matter what perennial that you grow. Fig trees are not special in some way. There's no mystery here. They need mulch. We need to cover the soil. We need to add organic material. We need to add life to the soil. Um, if you're not doing that and you're not eliminating weeds and other competition, it's gonna be difficult, I'm telling you. Um, you're wasting your time. If you add mulch, you're gonna save yourself like a year or two. And if you add enough of that mulch, it's really gonna go a long way. Year after year, I always add something. I get a wood chip, uh, wood chip delivery every fall, and that's when I apply my wood chips, every single fall. And they'll break down throughout the, the spring and the summer. By the time the fall comes around, we get another application. Um, and the trees love it, especially these younger ones. They need to get their roots established, and that consistent moisture that the mulch provides allows them to continue growing and find that excess moisture that there is because it's being conserved and then they can get established and then you may not even really need a whole lot of mulch after about four or five years. But in those first three years, it's critical. Definitely give them moisture. And if, especially if you guys live in a desert-like climate, somewhere really dry, whew, you gotta give them mulch. Um, and that also leads us into the next tip, which is water. I mean. I always water now after planting. In the beginning, I didn't because I have really heavy clay. It also rained a lot. 
and now it's been raining a little bit less in the, the re recent years. This year we've had a good amount of moisture that's come to these trees and you can see its impact. But I did water them about three or four times after planting. Should have watered them more. There was about a month period, even though it's three months now since I've planted these. The time of filming today is August 1st, but the, the trees really for about a month needed more water than they, they had available to them. And you could see it. Water's the on or off switch of growth and if they're not continuing to grow, that's a problem. You know there's not enough water uh, typically right after transplanting, they'll stop a little bit, but if you even give them water right after transplanting and are consistent with that, they need about a half gallon to about two gallons of water every day for these, these smaller trees here that we plant. That's a sweet spot right there, especially in the drier places, maybe up that a little bit, warmer climates, drier climates, up that a little bit. We're going to have really good success. They just want to, you want to keep them growing, as I mentioned, with the, the larger pot size. After we put them in the ground, we want them to continue growing. And one of the things actually that impedes that is the water, but also is too many, too many fruits. Uh, I made a big mistake here with this salato tree. It happens. You don't get every tree right every time. You know, we learn, we constantly need to remind ourselves of old habits that we make um, and need to do things in the right way. This tree here has had just too many fruits on it. Had it close to 20 fruits. I thinned out the fruits, actually. We did a video on actually removing fruits. And I removed in that video, I think, close to maybe 10 or eight, seven or eight fruits, I think, at the time. And uh, it really needed to be removed more, but also I didn't have enough mulch on this tree. The tree was planted very shallow and you can see actually the uh, the root system here, I'll show it to you real quick. You can visibly see the root system on top of the soil. And it's just, it was not covered properly. And so here is that fibrous root system here. See that? Of this potted fig tree. And I didn't have this mulch covering that, serving that moisture. And even right now, there's not enough of that mulch. So that's one thing there. I would probably remove all the fruits I know a lot of us want to get fruits as quickly as possible. They're not going to taste very good early on, especially when these trees are young. Just get the tree in the ground. Once we get it established, they'll start to taste a lot better and you'll be a lot better off, guys. Um, those are the three main things. I know that's pretty simple. Obviously plant it in a warm spot, a sunny spot. Give them room. I plant, the, I plant them really close. I'd say about four feet minimum away from other trees or, or away from other fig trees. Add more organic material. You don't have compost, peat moss, worm castings, mulch, uh, you, know, um, you know, leaves, straw, hay, whatever it is you're using, wood chips. Get yourself some living mulch. Get yourself some comfrey here. This is what I do, and I'll be using this as chop and drop very, very soon. As soon as the weather starts to turn here, in the Philadelphia area. I do all my chop and drop and will cover all of my fruiting plants to keep that soil um, moist. Now that the summer heat is here and it's the warmer part of the year, we gotta keep these trees and these plants alive. I can't chop and drop just yet. But as soon as that happens, we turn that corner, I'll be doing that chop and drop to all the little plants here that I use as biomass for that extra mulch. So thank you guys. Hope that helps. I know you guys will see success with these tips. Hit that subscribe button for me. Hit that like button and check out my blog, figboss.com.